Art Museum, which we have, it's still there, and you can actually see the bullet hole. Uh, he started shooting people in the Cracker Art Museum, killed two people. The funny thing is, is that across the street was a blacksmith, and it's kind of funny because, you know, a blacksmith shop right across the street from, like, this incredible museum. But he saw it happen, and he pulled out his shotgun, and he shot him. One pellet of buckshot hit the guy right in the heart and killed him. When wow. this crime happened, there were only two police officers on duty in all of Sacramento. And, you know, at the time, Sacramento was over 100,000 people. Two cops. They mm-hmm. were sitting around by themselves. So so police policing and science of police has just gotten much better. Our police officers are better ed- educated. They're better trained. Back then, they'd just give you a badge or a gun and a club and say, <laughs> go on out, you know. And uh, so, you know, now the, the, you know, the forensics that we have and all that stuff, uh, people get caught now. Mm. Well, thank you very much. Well, thanks sure. For, thanks. Thanks for listening. Well, you know, again, of I, I find that interesting. The one that was about five foot tall, that yeah, yeah that I, I don't understand why. Was there any motive why she killed her husband? No, and you know, writing that book um, came out a couple of years ago. California's Deadliest Women. I got PTSD from writing it. I, I wrote it in about six months. And it's on Craven Street Books. And uh, it, it got to me because not only did I wrote about 36 murders, and I picked females that were influenced by males to, to kill. They, they did it on their own. So that whittled away a bunch of crimes. So for, for all these 36 murders, I read every single female murderer in California history. So... You know, I left out some, some just aren't as interesting, you know, some are, and, uh, you know, I, hopefully I got the most interesting ones. It it seems that way, but, um, I got PTSD by the time I was almost finished. Um, it took me a good year or more to get over it. Well, I can see why. I mean, again, people killing women you know it makes you think you marry somebody but again maybe she had hostility when she was a little child and she was cast oh, sure you know and it, it did something to her emotionally where she hated men and that's why yeah. you know she got off on bondage and all that other stuff and she you know probably was trying to humiliate uh you know men and maybe she just had enough when she decided to hit her husband with the uh, iron yeah and you know that's why i write these stories um if somebody wants to go out and totally analyze her and write and research about her that's great I, i'm what i'm doing is I'm, I'm turning over rocks so other people can look further into it yeah i just you know you don't hear many you heard cases of people that killed people and cooked them and stuff like that but like like some of these women evidently like cooking their hands uh, you know cooking their oh, ribs yeah. and saying it's the best ribs i i mean they really i i don't know that is really scary oh yeah yeah and there's like um um i call her the acid queen i kind of have funny titles for my stories i kind of use uh songs for them <laughs> Base, base the titles on songs just for the fun of it. But this uh, Larissa Schuster, she was in Fresno, outside of Fresno, Clovis. And people don't think about it, but Fresno is the fourth largest city in California. And uh, if you're a school teacher, you can live like a king there. There's a lot of scientists there, too, because of the agriculture. So she, that's what she was. She was a scientist, and she started her own uh, research firm. And her husband was like a, a medical guy some kind of administrator guy and you know he made pretty good money too but she was making tons of money and she was a real dick to him she'd like tell him about you know her uh, affairs that she was having and what a loser he was and she would do it right in front of people it's horrible so they finally got divorced and uh she wanted more than than uh just divorcing him because he was entitled to half so her and uh a 
guy that worked for her, um, stunned him with a stun gun, knocked him out, and then dumped him head first into a barrel full of hydrochloric acid. <laughs> in the garage. And um, they had to pour more in and they had to like bend his legs so they could close the barrel. And they filled it up to the top. Then they took it and put it in a storage unit. Yeah, I wonder, so, how, I wonder how long it took before they, they found that and they got caught. It was a couple of weeks. Like, right away, he had a lot of good friends, you know. Like, nobody liked her because she was this horrible, mean, mean person, you know. And he was, like, a real likable guy. And so his friends, um, he didn't show up for a, a breakfast date. And uh, um, they thought, you know, that's just not right. They went to his house, looked around, saw that there was a scuffle, and they got the police involved. So she's doing life, too. Uh, she showed no emotion during the trial, you know, she had it moved, stretched it as far as she could. She was the like acid queen, man. Yeah, I, I did just think about how you you sit there and you kill somebody and you put them in a storage <sighs> container, you know, uh, yeah. and not think about somebody's going to, you know, find, yeah. find it for one way or another. Some of these murders are dumb enough. They put a body in one of those things and then they forget to pay the rent. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's a good way to get Well, you want to hear a lighthearted story? This is in my book, uh, um, Death in California. It's my second book, and that's on Craven Street Books, too. And it's the freakish, bizarre, and curious ways people died in California. So it's not all murder, but it's a death. And uh, there was this guy named Guy Gilpatrick, and he was one of those guys that everything he did, he was successful at. Uh, when he was 16... He got his pilot's license. This is 1912, and he broke an altitude record. Um, he had a flying school. Then, when World War One broke out, he went and you know was in the Air Force and stuff. He mustered out as a captain, and so when he got out, he was in Paris and stuff. And he, uh, uh, oh, he became. He went back to New York and became like the the head of this advertisement agency. Married his wife. And then they moved to the French Riviera, where he was the um, um, European uh, or the French uh, uh, correspondence for Saturday Evening Post. He starts writing, you know, can you imagine being in the French Riviera in 1925? Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, come on, man. Holy cow. So him and his wife, they were wildly in love with each other. They didn't have kids or anything. He started writing these uh, short stories that came in the Saturday Evening Post about Colin Glenn Cannon, and they're still available, and they are pretty good stories. And this guy was like a whiskey drinking, scuffle attracting chief engineer of a rusty English tramp steamer, right? It was his adventures. And uh, they got crazy popular. And uh, he, he was a prof just wrote like crazy. Um, they ended up uh, moving back to America, he invented a new type of uh, fishing called goggle fishing, goggler fishing. And um, I'm not quite sure, even after like 10 years, what it is. It's, uh -huh. To me, it's kind of like, it, it's like snorkeling, you know. I, I think this guy like invented the snorkel. I don't know. I got in big trouble from the Googlers or gogglers society after i wrote this so they were living in santa barbara they had this beautiful mansion like multiple guest houses and stuff and uh oh and he also wrote a screenplay that uh, uh was nominated for academy award called action in the north pacific with humphrey bogart so in 1950 his wife uh went to the doctors and they said that uh, she had a, a uh, tumor in her breast, and they had to operate right away. It was cancer. So, you know, back then, there was not much they could do about things like that, you know. And so they went home and, and committed murder-suicide. Guy shot his wife. They were both in bed, shot her, and then shot himself. And uh, thirty-two caliber pistol. So they were found and all that. Turns out the doctor had the wrong chart. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the, the the Googler fisherman of America 
I had to like do a lot of blocking and, and, uh, you know, I was getting hassled by them on the, I'll probably get hassled by them now by bringing this up. If there's somebody listening, <laughs> could you go? Cause he's like a God to them. Could you imagine though? Think about this. How many people got misinformation from their doctors and committed mm-hmm. suicide because they, they were told they only have less than a year to live or, or even like yeah. months or days to live and they get really yeah. depressed and then they off themselves. And then, you know, they, it comes yep. out that the doctor was totally wrong and mi- either misdiagnosed the person or read the wrong, you know, medical report. Wrong chart. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Wow. That, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, our time is almost up. Where can they find your books oh. at David? Well, uh, my first four books are available at any decent bookstore. Um, there's California Justice, Death in California, California's Deadliest Women, and California's Fruit Flakes and Nuts. Of course, they're all available on Amazon, too. Interesting. And uh, your latest book, is that available that way, too? It's available through Amazon. 1926 Homicide in America is, is only available through Amazon. I actually had a book deal for this, and they were so screwy that I got out of it. I was like, man, <laughs> you know, I'm out of here, man. Let's avoid this contract because uh, it was, like, too goofy. So I just thought, man, I've been working on this book so long, I'm just going to put it out myself. Sometimes that's better. You know, here's the thing I have. I, I've had interviewed a lot of authors for the years. And some of them done self-published, some gone through, you know, publishing houses. But here's the thing I always get scared of. Here's somebody that spends a week and writes a book and self-publishes it and then can't understand why this 300-page book isn't selling. Yeah. There was some guy in uh, outside of Boston um, maybe in, in November or so. And he wrote uh, a couple of children's books that he just produced himself on Amazon. And I guess he had quit his job. He had a couple of kids and stuff. Thought he was going to be this big author. And then he ended up, like, freaking out. And he killed his uh, son and daughter and his wife and himself. Oh, wow. That's so sorry and, to hear you know, that. <laughs> I know. But, you know, you see these commercials. It's like, Are you an author and want to have a book? It's, uh, you know... <sighs> authors don't you don't make money be it doing this you know you, you become a writer because you have to it's not it's not like uh you know if you think you're going to get fame and fortune you might i mean it's a crap shoot but you know chances are you just have to do your best work and hope that people read it and enjoy it yeah same thing as being a talk show host you know that mm-hmm but mm-hmm. I, I can tell you, you got to watch out for some of these self-publishing places because, you know, I remember the three students, oh, yeah. the attorney, I flee some you. Right. Oh, right. Yeah, there's one, I won't even say it, but they have commercials a lot on like MSNBC and CNN and uh, they, they kind of turn religion into it. And then everything they, they could do, you could do yourself, you know, you, you could do yourself. I mean... You you could upload it on Amazon and stuff if you wanted to. Uh, you, you don't need somebody to do it for you, but they're not going to. Oh, that's a whole other. That's a whole other subject matter. <laughs> yeah, it is. Hey, David. <laughs> but just... you know, you, you get these. You get these. You know, publishers. Mine were great. You know, my Craven Street are great. But I've heard other people say that. Um, you know, they they get their uh, residuals, they get $80, and they see that the book made 800 but the uh, publisher itemizes it and said, well, it's $30 for the mailing we did, uh, you know, $150 for this, and they just nickel and dime them, and they don't get anything out of it. Yeah, that's what you really need to check out, the publisher and the companies. David, I want to thank yeah. you for coming on. I really enjoyed the conversations, and man... I tell you what, make sure before you guys get married, check out your possible <laughs> wife beforehand. Anyway, not, David, o- not only guys, yeah, not women only check guys, too. the yeah. women should check even more. Many more murderers than, than uh, are male than female. Oh, yes. I mean, it's, it's like, it's outrageous. There's only been 
maybe 120 women in California history 